Hey, good morning again, everyone. Um, I do hope that during our session, I will be able to, um, we will be able to learn a bit about the core principle of online activity, uh, what we should uh, take in mind when we're building an online activity. And the, this will be the first part, about 20 minutes, more or less. And then the second part uh, will be me sharing with you some uh, technological tools that can be used for educational uh, uh, programs or online educational programs. Um, and I will share my presentation. Um, first, obviously, I will introduce myself, but then I will show you free, a few ideas of really how you can um, uh, use those tools in order to create better online activities. Um, so I will be sharing my presentation on and off. Whenever you have any kind of questions, uh, I will try to speak very slowly. Um, so interrupt me, or uh, if you have any question, write in the chat, uh, and I will stop whenever uh, uh, needed. Um, this is our uh, uh, topic of, of today. Uh, who am I? So this is, in a nutshell, as I said about myself, um, I said that I'm working for now for also for the Jewish agency, but I also have my own business that in Hebrew called Chinuchologia. It's a combination of two words, education and technologia. And I am also been working for many years now um, as a, a computer technician. I have an official, uh, uh, I'm a certified Microsoft com uh, computer technician. And for many years, I, I really enjoy and I find it very helpful to combine uh, the usage of technology in my programs. And in the last six months, seven months, as you probably know, when the entire world became uh, online or the educational world became online, uh, I think that this skill uh, became very helpful and I established my company called Chinuchologia um, supporting, advising, and, and showing, uh, introducing uh, educational uh, people, people who work in, in education, uh, with uh, the importance of using technology and how we can do it right. So, as I said at the beginning, now you can hear better, um, in the first 20 minutes, more or less, I will, I will share with you some thoughts uh, that took from research on the better way or the right way or the, the, the good way, the good manner that we can use technology in our activities. And then the rest of our conversation would be uh, actually me showing, presenting, and, and, and uh, sharing with you um, uh, educational or not only educational, but technological tools that you can use for your day-to-day -day activities. So this is the idea. So let me go to my presentation and we can uh, actually start. If, again, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to stop me. Uh, I do not understand what's written on the, the screen, but I hope the translation, I, I trust Debbie and I trust uh, the staff that it is what I mean. Whenever we are planning an activity, and let's say that the water that are in the bucket are the educational content, of our activity. At the beginning of the, uh, of the pandemic of, of the coronavirus, we people thought that we can just take the water, the educational content, and we could pour it from the face-to-face -face method of creating an activity and leading an activity. We can just pour it to a different bucket that we'll call Zoom or online activity. We know a from experience and B from research, that it doesn't work. People don't like to do an activity on Zoom. It's boring. We have to think or to rethink how we can create the activity in a way that it will be engaging, it will be fun. And for our participants, they will feel that they want to take part in our activity. So there are a few researchers that are speaking about what is the meaning or the implications of distance learning, and I will speak about one of them. I would say in a side note that if any of you wants to get the full research, please let Asi or Ariel or Debbie know after, and I will be happy to 
extend the full research, it's in English, but if someone wants to learn more, I will be happy to. The first bucket that we need to take in consideration is the content bucket. I mean, if I want to lead an activity about any kind of topic, even when I'm doing it online, I still need to remember what is the educational theme or topic that I want to speak about. But I have to take in mind that I need to add few other things. For example, I have to add the experience. It is true that in every kind of activity, I would like the participants to, to have fun and to feel that they experience something unique. But when we're speaking about online activity, it's even more than that. Because sitting in front of a computer or a phone or an, an iPad, doesn't matter, tablet, doesn't matter what we are sitting in front, you're very passive and you're not doing a lot besides only looking and listening and maybe thinking. We do want the activity to be with a lot of uh, experience that they will feel that uh, it's something that is fun for them. And the third component is the technology. Obviously, when we're doing online learning, we need to think about what kind of technologies we're using. Are we asking them to use their phone while they're watching us from their laptops? Are we taking for granted that they're all using laptops? And I will speak about it in a second, how we can understand correctly or the best way, how we are assigning the right technology to the educational need. And this sentence is very important because in my opinion, every time that you're in front or that you're about to create an activity, you have to think to yourself, what is the, what exact is the educational need that I'm up to now? And what is the technological solution, the te technological answer for this need? All those three components, the experience, the technology, and the educational content are being poured together to one tank that we will call the long, uh, the distance learning tank. And when people are speaking about long distance learning uh, or distance learning, uh, this is what they speak about according to this specific research. Now, when we're speaking about different methodologies of learning, we do need to first understand that there are few. It's not only one methodology. And I, I do think that it's important to understand what are the three main methodologies when it comes to online learning. The left methodology, face-to-face, is what we are used to. We're giving a lecture or an activity. It can be in summer camp or in class, whatever you are doing. And it's a frontal session. I am as the lecturer standing in front of the class or we're sitting in a circle and I'm speaking about my educational content. When you're thinking about self, think how many years you have experience of being the person who is learning like that and also as a teacher or as a counselor think how many years we are experienced in learning of the method of face to face but we do have other methods that is important to understand the second method is blended we want to blend our means what do i mean method is a is a, a blended is a method that means that i am still sitting in a classroom or in a circle and part of the learning that I want to do with my students is a technological learning, meaning, or an example, if I want to learn about a specific character, a famous person, I will ask them during class to open their phones, to watch a video on YouTube, and then to answer a few questions in Google Form, just for the example. And then we're going back to the classroom to, the continuing, to continue our class. This method called blended. The third method called hybrid. In Israel now, it's, it's a hot word, lemida hybridit, hybrid learning, because the Ministry of Education is uh, asking uh, teachers to teach in a blended learning method. Blended uh, learning, uh, hybrid learning, sorry, means that we don't have to um, learn all at the same time, and I will explain. 
if I'm still speaking about uh, the other example that I gave, I want to teach my students about a specific character in the history. So hybrid says, we don't have to do all the online learning at the same time. I can ask my students to watch the video YouTube that I asked them to watch prior to the class, the evening before as a homework. I can ask them to fill the form not during class. And then during class, what we will do, we will discuss and process the, uh, the video together and we will ask ourselves what is the meaning of the video for us and for our activity and for our learning. So it doesn't have to be on the same time and that's hybrid learning. The people who are supporting this method are saying that the average person our days is doing a, a, a hybrid learning all the time. Because if you will think about yourself, if you want to learn something or there is a term that you heard and you don't know about, most people will open their phones, will uh, write this uh, word in their search engine and will read what comes first. Did they learn something? Yes, they did, but it wasn't part of a class or an activity. So this is the, uh, uh, the idea of hybrid learning. And the, third, the fourth one is online learning. If you have a session, that the entire session is online, even if we're, if we're speaking about the example. So I am teaching now about a, cer a certain uh, uh, character. I am sharing my screen for you to see this video, but then we're continuing the lesson in Zoom or any other app that we're using for a video conversation. This is the meaning of online. Why it is important for us to understand the four methodologies? Because at least in the what called the, the circle of learning, it is important to understand what is the methodology that we're using. Because according to research, the right way to understand which kind of tool we're using for our activities needs to be um, combined with two other uh, elements. The first one is the environment, what is surrounding us. The environment is very important. The best example is the coronavirus. The coronavirus came and it changed everything. The environment of learning, of activities, of, of school, of informal activity changed. And we cannot do anymore, at least in some places, face-to-face -face activities or learning. So we have to switch to blended, hybrid, or online. The second element is the methodology because if the environment is affecting uh, my learners, I need to change the methodology. And then the technology is also part of it because when I am choosing an educational tool for me to, um, uh, um, to use when I'm, when I'm creating an activity, it is very important that the educational tool will fit correctly in my, met in my methodology. And I will give an example. If I am learning now on a live, a live class, then I can use, for example, collaborative tool like Google Doc or any other tool that while I'm creating or I am, 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 am writing a word, then the rest of the class, the rest of the participants can see what I wrote. If that methodology that I'm using is blended, then maybe Google Doc is not the right form. And even if it's hybrid, because if we're saying every person, every student is doing this task when on his free time or her free time, maybe collaborative tool is not the right tool that I will use. And this is basically why it's important to understand the circle of learning. And I will stop for a second and ask if there are any questions comment someone who wants to add something or to ask something. Okay, so I hope everything is okay. Just give me any kind of sign that you're okay and you're with me. Okay, can you hear me? All good, great. So I'm continuing my presentation.
So here is the circle of learning. Three um, um, uh, uh, professors in Harvard, a, a school of education in Harvard, made a research and they're offering us five steps to stay focused when teaching online. Basically five steps in order for us to be better online teachers and facilitators. First step is to treat ourselves and to understand that during online sessions, we need to look at ourselves less as a teachers or madrichim or counselors and more as a gym instructor, coach. Because they're saying that coach or gym instructor, a good one, will a explain to his uh, um, uh, trainer uh, trainee sorry he will explain to his participants what is the meaning of the specific exercise that they are doing b he or she will explain what is the meaning of this exercise in the entire exercise plan so he will say yes we're doing now this exercise with uh, um, uh, uh, with your hands uh, and it will help your hand to get stronger. And it, we're doing this today because yesterday we worked on legs and tomorrow we will do something else. And see, maybe the most important thing on, in online learning and also in being a good gym instructor is that, at least in the research they're saying, the instructor will also participate in the exercise itself. So when we are asking our students or, or, or campers or whatever you're working with, you're, with the kids you're working with, when you're asking them to fill any kind of form or to do an online activity, it's a good idea that you will also uh, uh, do this activity with them. Second point is, like on, on, on a gym uh, session, every day we're working on a different muscle. So if you used a, a tool, an, a, a, an online tool for your activity, for your session, even if it's a great tool and you really enjoyed using it, don't use it every day. Try to be as diverse as you can. And this is the second part of our conversation and the rest of our conversations in our two meetings. I will try to introduce you with multiple options to be as creative as you can be in order to bring different type of tools every kind of session. Third point, and we just felt it on ourselves, online learning takes more time than face-to-face. -face. They're, they're naming few reasons. The main reason is um, um, uh, tech problems. This is not working. The share screen is not working. The translation is a bit uh, complicated. We need to enter from a different user. All those kind of things. It takes more time. They are suggesting to the Harvard professors that for a 90 minute session that they used to give face to face to plan to be able to deliver only 17, 70 minutes, seven zero. So be ready that it will take longer for your participants to be able to be part of an online session. So it takes more time. Fourth point, obviously it's, um, it's to all kinds of activities and learning, but we, and we spoke about it, we, don't, we want the, uh, the online activity to be fun. We want it to be kind of a game and I will show you an example. And the fifth point is, uh, as important is it to get into the session and to bring uh, uh, all the energies, it is also important, especially in online learning, to process what we just experienced. And I will explain why. They are sharing on their research that we as experienced education, education people, when we're sitting in a classroom, it's very easy for us to look at a student and to understand what do they feel about what we just learned? Are they interested? Are they uh, bored? Maybe they are sad. But when we're doing an online activity, we cannot do so. 
So it is very important also to process what we have learned. So those are the five steps that I wanted to speak about. And now, um, this is the end of, of this uh, 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 part. And I wanna ask, are there any questions, anything about what we just spoke, something that you want to, uh, uh, me to clarify or to add or to ask something? Great. So I want to show you now to get to the second part of our conversation, where I want to show you a few examples of really fun activities and educational activities that you can use while creating your own program. And I will start by showing you how I can start an activity with my students that will be a different beginning because part of on part of what online session is all about is to start the session in a fun way. We want the participants to come with high energy and how we can do it. So here is one example and I wanna show you. This way is called a um, word wall and I will put the link in a second. And I wanna show you an example. So because it's all Hebrew, I'm not gonna ask you one by one to choose a number, but let's say that we are now in a class and I want the uh, students to start the class in a fun way. So I created a game and I can ask my students, for example, to choose a number. So here on, on my list to the left, I can, I can see some of you. So I can just name someone. I can say, I don't know, uh, Oksana, if you can please choose a number. And let's say, just for the sake of the uh, example, that you chose five. I'm checking on five, and here I have a question. So here I, I shared a fun question. If the skies in Israel would be open for 24 hours only, where is the first place that you would live? And then I can give the students an opportunity to answer the question. And as I press the different numbers, you can see, that I have multiple questions uh, over here. How did I did that? And um, what is this uh, app about? Oh, not share screen, sorry. Um, this is a great app called Word Wall. And here you can see it. And I will share the link to it here for you to have already. If someone wants, so I'll put it on the chat, wordwall.net. There it is, and you have it here. WordWall is a great platform to create, as I said, um, small games. So here is the uh, website, and the uh, free plan that they offer, you can create up to five games. And how do I create games? So first of all, I will uh, roll a bit down, and you can see that they are offering templates for games. So it can be match up, random wheel, quiz, different options. Um, let me see if they have it in different languages. It is uh, very interesting if they are offering. Um, is there, oh, I see, I think that this, one of them is Russian, right? So it may be, uh, so if one of those options is Russian, so you can have this website also in Russian. Um, and the idea is that you are choosing any kind of template and you can use this as a, as a as educational game. So it can be, um, for example, uh, let's learn about specific words. And here is the game that I just chose a random game that was on the list here. I can put, you know, here is, is the dog and this is, I don't know if it's the duck or the bird. And then I can submit my answers and can check if I'm right or wrong. So it can be with any, any kind of activity that you want. And as, as you could see here, there are many templates. So here is another idea for opening year activity. English with Tamar. So here is what she did. She did a, a random wheel. This is the template that she chose. And the same way how I uh, did it earlier, we can spin the wheel. 
then I can choose a specific student. For example, just on my list to the right, I can say, I don't know, um, Lana, if you can share with us, please, a meaningful person in your life. You don't have to, only if you want, but this is what came in the will. Now, if I want um, that each, per, each student will get one question, I can press eliminate, and then the question disappeared, and I can spin again, and again, it can be a great activity. Now the question is, um, a year from now, where I see myself, or any kind of question about a year from now. The idea here on Wordwall, this is the name of this website, is to create really fun games that will be open, that will be able to open or in the middle or by the end of our class, we can use it. How do I do it? When after signing in to the website, I'm going to my activities and here I can see all the activities that I already created. If I'm doing, if I'm pressing create activity, it will offer me to start a new uh, uh, game. I can choose any kind of template from the free template. There are also uh, templates for multiplayer and printable if I want to print it after. And let's say that I want the game to be true or false, or I want it to be um, hangman, different templates that I can use and I can create the game. Now, another thing about this specific website that is really good, this is the, what I showed with you earlier. This is my activity. The website knows automatically to offer me different templates that I can use with the same questions. So here is my question. But for example, I'm doing show more here on switch template, show all. The website knows to tell me that random wheel can also work, but also random cards. And now if I want to play the same game, asking questions, but now it's like uh, dealing a card and on every card, there is a question. It can be a fun question in order to start, for example, a, 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 the class with a, a, a fun way, but it can also be a question that is related to the educational content that you are teaching about. If again, I'm coming back to the example of speaking about a famous character or famous person, um, then I can ask questions about the person that I spoke about. And I do see, see that I have a question. You said five games, up to five games in one account only. Yes, this is correct. Up to five games in one account. If I'm deleting one, I can add another one. So in your account, you can have up to five. Now, if you have in your staff, other people, each person can open an account and create a game. And I can share with you the game that I created and you can use it whenever you want. So if you have few people on your staff, you, um, I, I would uh, suggest that speak prior to starting creating games, what kind of games you want to create and split it like, like that, that you know who is building which game and then you're sending all the links, let's say in one Google doc, and then I know, okay, if I want to teach about um, a person or Russian language or whatever, this is the link to this game. And then you don't need to reinvent yourself all the time. Okay, so this is the first app that I wanna show you. It's a great way uh, to start uh, a, a session. Um, and now like about how I can do like icebreakers, how uh, different ideas to open uh, the class in a fun way. So I want to show you another app, another website called Scribble. Scribble is a really fun website. The idea of Scribble is, let me see how it opens in, where is it here? Now I can share it, great. Here is Scribble, now you can see it. Scribble is a website um, that 
allows me to create a room where my students, and I'll put the link here, my students can um, uh, uh, draw a word and all the participants need to guess. There are many, many languages, so you can, I assume that there is Russian. Let's see, Romanian, Serbian. Mega. Oh, I don't see, I don't see Russian, um, but you can do it also in English and also in Hebrew. If you want, let's try just for the example, um, the uh, option in English. So if I'm joining a room, you can see that the participants now in a room, I have two participants, four participants now, and the participants called haha -ha is now choosing a word. So he or she is choosing now a word, and the word has one, two, three, four, five, six letters, and, but they, they left. So let's maybe go to a different room. And what they had to do, if, they, if we had actually played, is that here, here is an example. So now there is someone who chose a word, one, two, three, four, five, six words again, and now they're actually drawing the word that they got. And we need to guess over here in English, what is the word that they're drawing? And if I would guess right, then it would say, you're right, and I got the point. And it's fun because it's really creative. And when going to create a private room, I can also create a specific room only for my students. So I can choose how many rounds I want, how much time each drawing will take, what is the language between the languages that are optional, and I can also choose a specific word that they will have to draw. And it's just a fun way to start a class, and I can also tell the, uh, the website to use only exclusively those words. So if I am teaching about a specific topic, I can write those words and we can have a fun activity about this uh, uh, program. So this is Scribble. And I also want to show you an app called Snappy. Snappy is recommended for classes that have a lot of energy. And you want at the beginning of the class to help the student a bit release their energy and to come with less energies to class. What is Snappy? And here I will put the link on the chat for people who already want. I do see that we have a question. If uh, Asi or Ariel or uh, Yulia, if you want to stop me for the question from Dasha that I don't understand, so please let me, let, tell me to stop. Um, so what is Snappy? I can write my email over here and then I get a link. I send the link to my students and Snappy is the character over here. Here is, this is Snappy. The idea is that you are joining the video call and everyone should do what Snappy is doing. So Snappy says do a jumping jack and everyone need to do jumping jack. So students who have a lot of energy, um, we, we can use this and, and help them a bit to release their energies before class. So here are a few examples already that you have um, for uh, activities um, uh, uh, that can start the class or the activity um, uh, online that are fun and, and also can be uh, played. Another idea, PlayBuzz. PlayBuzz is a platform, it's actually an Israeli platform, and I hope that they do have option in Russian, let me check. Um, sure they have in English and they do have in Russian. So you can uh, obviously create Russian uh, uh, kind of test. And you can see here, those are the types of the test or of the um, trivia that they are offering. The idea is to create like a personality test. So for example, you can create a test that the students by the end of the session the, the, or by the end of the test, um, the students will ask themselves how much they are something. 
um, if it's about a teacher or about a specific um, a, a example of a student and they can create here, create your own experience. So on PlayBuzz, there is on Russian, you can create your own um, a, a, a trivia. And it's, it's a, in my experience, it's a fun way to create, again, an opening or a closure to a class. I will skip this. And I want to show you a, a, a different, and maybe I will stop for a second and ask if there are any questions. Someone wants to ask something, something was not clear. Okay, great, so I'll continue. I want to speak now about what called collaborative tool. I spoke about it in a sentence earlier, but I want to emphasize what is a collaborative tool? So collaborative tool is a, a, is a technological tool that after someone is opening the file, he or she can share the link to the file itself and all the participants, all the people who got the link can join and can edit and contribute to the file itself. I think that the most known example for a um, collaborative tool is Google Doc. I can open a Google Doc and then I can send it here to the group and every person who got the link can add and write something on my Google Doc. How we can use collaborative tools in order to create an educational program. This is what I wanna show you now. The first example that I want to show you is Padlet. Padlet, great app, is, let me press on it. The idea behind Padlet is that Padlet is a joint board wall, wall board, sorry. Imagine that you're walking uh, somewhere in a building and there is a, 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 a board wall on the wall. So Padlet offers you to create a board that every person who got the link to is collaborate and can, um, and, and can uh, uh, add and contribute to our wall. So look, here is one example. Um, my, the Shlicha who works in the Jewish Federation of New Hampshire in, in America asked her community members to post something what Israel means to me. And different people from the community posted their picture on the collaborative board and they wrote what is the meaning for Israel for them. A different example that I can share with you is end of year summary that I did with my, uh, with my colleagues in university. I wanted to have a discussion. We wanted to have a discussion where the main question was, how do you summarize the last year or the last semester. And I asked my colleagues to send me a picture anonymously. We didn't know who sent what pictures. And I posted all the pictures here on the Padlet. And then when sending the link to the other participants, I asked them to comment on the pictures. And I asked them to write any kind of thought of, or question that they have about the different pictures that people posted. They didn't know who posted what picture. So how do I post any kind of, of something on Padlet? And I will show you. After I opened the Padlet, and I will show in a second how do I open it. Two options. One option is double click and I have a new post. What I can post here, when I press the three dots, I can see that I can post a file, I can post a link, I can post a video, I can post a voice a record, I can voice a screen, draw, place a different Padlet. Those are the options. Or a different options can be just to write something. So if I'm writing, let's say, 
Shlomi, this is my name, and I'm writing a question about one of the pictures. Then I can put the question over here, right click on the picture, connect to a post, and connect. Oh, Shlomi, Shlomi. Yes, please. I, I, I don't think the people see the, your padlet, we see just the presentation okay, with right. all the names. We, Boy, let's see why. You are totally right. I apologize. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Okay. This is the Padlet. Thank you, Ariel. This is the example of uh, the first example that I showed. Okay. This is the example of how people can post their pictures um, uh, on, on, a, on, on the joint wall. And they are posting um they are posting what israel means to them okay and just uh, uh, I, I just want to say as, as a side note this is why of the this is a live example why online session will take more time than face to face i did the mistake and i apologize but it will take us more time now to fix the mistake because it was online mistake so here is the example of the padlet where different people shared what they feel that Israel means to them. And here are the pictures and what, and what they wrote. And here is the second example where I asked my colleagues in university to share a picture that will reflect their uh, semester, the online semester that we had. And here you can see how other people wrote comments on their pictures. And basically what we have here, we have a virtual discussion because from now I can, so I can do stop share and I can um, uh, uh, take this uh, to a discussion that will be a total, in a, in a to total different level. And now we can spoke about the comments, now we can spoke about the pictures and because it's collaborative, every person can add any kind of thought. And how do we add thoughts or add, add post? Double click on the board itself. And here's a new post. And now I can write my name and I can write that I have a question. Oh, where is it here? And double click on the picture and connect to a post will connect this post, this question to this picture. And now I can, doesn't matter where this post will move, we always know that this one will have this question. How do I open Padlet? So again, Padlet is a great tool. Uh, they are offering five Padlets, five boards for free. And again, you can delete one and then create a new one. When making a new Padlet, the website will ask you, what kind of Padlet do you want to create? Make a Padlet, wall, canvas, stream, grid, timeline, shelf, back channel, map. It's a different uh, method to create Padlet. I do know that they are supporting languages. I'm not sure that the website itself is supporting different languages. Maybe we can check in the settings and maybe um, there are uh, options of uh, changing the language uh, to Russian. Let's see. Um, is that Russian? I'm not sure, I, I think so. So I, I do think that th there is an option of, of Russian, uh, but you can do it in every language that you, that you want from the options here. And it's a great option um, to, to create something that is collaborative. And now I want to stop for a second and say that in my mind, whenever we have an opportunity to use a technological tool in education, there are always two levels. And what do I mean by that? The first level, the basic level, is to create something for our students. And if I will take the example that I used in the previous slide, let's say that I want to teach about a specific historical character, about a specific person that we are learning about. On Padlet, I can, if you saw one of the options to create a Padlet, is to create a timeline. So I can create a timeline on Padlet for my students 
showing and presenting the life of the person that we, talk, we, that we learned about. The second level of using technology in education is always ask your students to use the technological tool to create something that will reflect what we have learned. And if I'm taking the example that I shared, I will ask them to go on Padlet. I will explain them how to use the Padlet for the beginning. But then I will ask every student to create a timeline that will reflect the history of the person that we learned about. Or as a opening game, we are asking them to create their own timeline that will reflect themselves, for the example. Yes, and then it's not only about sitting and hearing you lecturing and teaching about a specific person, it's also, and more important, it's also about them creating something. And this is what we want. We want them to be in the educational process in order for them to have fun. And this is what I think is fun about technology. So I spoke about Padlet and I want to show you a few other examples. And if you're not seeing what I'm showing, so stop me. Great, great app called TreeSider. TreeSider is a great app for brainstorming. If I want to have a process of brainstorming and voting in my class, I can go to TreeSider. And here is the link to TreeSider. And I can ask a question or what is the topic that we are, that we want to brainstorm about. Here, the students, I'm sending the link to the students and they, they have the link. Here they can add ideas. Every person can write his or her idea for the brainstorming that we're doing. Second stage is pros and cons what is good and what is not good about this idea. And the third step is vote. And obviously we can definitely do a brainstorming in the Zoom. I can stop what we're doing now and I can say, okay, let's brainstorm about the next project that we want to do as a class. But the idea of using technology is always think how the, the technology can support your educational process. And this is what I am uh, uh, offering. Because if we start by saying, we did our brainstorming on TreeSider, now let's come back to the Zoom and based on what we wrote, let's have another short discussion, then the process is much, much better, at least in my eyes. The last collaborative tool that I wanna show you is an Israeli tool. I'm not sure that it's working in Russian, but we can check in a second. It's called iton.news. The idea of iton.news, iton in Hebrew is newspaper. The idea of iton.news, and I will put the link on the chat right now for people who want. Iton.news is creating a collaborative newspaper. Let's see what kind of, what languages we have here. So we have English, Spanish, and Hebrew. Uh, so if you want to use it in Hebrew or in English, it's also possible. The idea is to create a collaborative newspaper. And I can go in and uh, um, create, or in English, I can go in, log in and create a newspaper that will actually look like a newspaper. And after I'm signing in and I'm opening my, um, my uh, signing up and I'm opening my account, here is my newspaper. I can send it to my students or participants and they can take part editing my newspaper. And then it can be a great option for a, you still see my presentation at it on, thank you. I know 
now you should see it. Every time it's the same problem. Okay, now I'll be, I'll take more uh, uh, attention. Here is eton.news and I'm logging in and here is the newspaper. And then you can actually see the newspaper that I created. I can send the link, editor uh, actions. I can send uh, the link to my students and they can log in and together each person from his or her computer or laptop or phone can have the app and they can edit with me my newspaper. And the, what I will get after is a final uh, a product of a newspaper that we worked on together. So this is eton.news. I do want to share with you few, or maybe I will stop here and I will sh ask, you know, are there any questions about collaborative tool? I do need to say that all the tools that I'm uh, presenting now have option of free account and a premium account. Usually, at least in my eyes, the free account can be, is enough to have a program with one group or one classroom, for example. If you do want to use a specific tool for few classrooms or for few different groups, then in my eyes, it is worth it to do a premium account. Because for example, I have my own private Padlet premium account because, because I found Padlet very, very helpful in different ways in different groups. So for me, I do prefer to have an option of unlimited Padlet because I do, I use it a lot. So you have all the links and you will have the record and I'll be happy to send the presentation itself and you will have all the links. My suggestion is start working with those tools, start understand what are the benefits and what they can give you. And then when understanding it, you will be able to understand if you need the premium or the free account. I do want to go now to show you a few apps that can be really, really helpful with everything that is about games and tasks during class. The first app that I want to show you called Jeopardy Lab. I assume that some of you knows the game of Jeopardy. And it's about trivia. Jeopardy Lab give us, gives us exactly what Jeopardy is all about. So we know, let's see if there are languages here. I don't think so. But I do know that you can write in different languages in the program itself. So I'm, I'm assuming that you are familiar with the, uh, with the idea of Jeopardy Labs, uh, different topics, and I'm asking different questions um, and different points. If the points are, high, are higher, then the question is harder. And I can create my own Jeopardy game, and then I can show it to the class and we can create a game um, based on what we have learned. And if I will scroll down, you can see that there are a few options already here that I, can, uh, uh, that I can choose from, or whenever I want, I can go and create my own game. So for example, here is, I don't know, the science of psychology, maybe it's not good, um, present, simple, or continuous, okay, let's choose just for the example, this survey. I can choose how many teams I want to have. Let's say I have two teams, start, and then the question is correct the mistake. Um, and let's say that I'm, I'm choosing 300. Uh, where does she working? This is the question. When I'm pressing space bar, where does she work? That's the right uh, way to ask it. And let's say that um, uh, let's say that group number one were correct, plus 300 into the team. And if I go like this, okay, here is the answer. Team number two gets 400 points. And it's a fun way to use um, the technology for a game that everyone is familiar. But if you're doing it online, this is a fun way to do it. I want to show you a diff another uh, a great uh, idea or a great app 
Learning Apps. This is the website. Learning Apps is a bit similar to WordWall that we already saw. On Learning Apps, we can create different type of games that will be, that will be like a, a mini software. So when I'm going on create an app, those are the templates that I can choose, matching pairs, number line, simple order, a closed text, crossword, etc., etc. And the idea is, for example, let's put number line. Here is the first, the app will show us a few examples. The task is to put the pieces of the recipe in the right order. Okay, so we need to put here, this is where it should be two, and this is what should be three, etc. etc. Another example that I can see here, um, well, that's not in, in English, so I'm not sure, but okay, here is again, we need to put the right order of socializing of how um, um, we are speaking with others, and I can put the sentences in the order and then I can check is that the right order or not. And when checking, it will let me know if I was correct and if not. And again, as I said, it's another great website to create different technological apps and programs for your students. The third website that I wanna show you here is Class Tools, and then I'll show you ED Puzzle. Class Tools, again, it's a website that collects few ideas for fun activities that you can create online. I will put the link in our chat for people who want to have the link. So the free options are the one that are not a premium, obviously. And here you have different options. For example, let's see, Image reveal. Okay, this is what, what I chose. Image reveal. So as I can go into image reveal, I can choose to upload any kind of image. So let's see what I have on my computer. Let's see if I have something on downloads. Um, here I have a picture of Hogwarts for activity that I did. So here is the picture. Now I can choose if I want more or less black um, uh, squares to cover it. Let's say that I have 16 students and I want each student to get a question. Now I can ask them, for example, choose a, a number. So let's say that the student chose number three. And let's say we spoke about this topic, share with us what you think about this and this. If he got the right answer or I am satisfied with his answer, I'm revealing square number three or 15 or five. And the game is obviously um, to discover what's behind uh, the wall, what's behind uh, the, uh, the, the squares and we can go and reveal everything. And it can also be a fun competition. So here is Class Tools, also a great website to think and to create ideas of how to um, add some technological uh, ideas to your classroom. And there are many, many options. I do recommend to you to go online and to play with it a bit and to understand what does it mean random name picker. Here is a, like word wall, as I said, we can uh, create a, 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 again, um, our, our random wheel, we can just you know write names and just for the example, save the list and we have uh, another wheel that we can play with and we can rotate it whenever we want. So here's another a, a, a great website. And I wanna show you one more, ED Puzzle. ED Puzzle, uh, it's a really unique website. The idea of ED Puzzle is to take any kind of a YouTube video and to make the YouTube video interactive in a way that you can insert questions during the video. 
And here is just an example that I created a few months ago. This is the song that was supposed to represent Israel in the Eurovision. And when the song starts, I defined that after five seconds, there will be an open-ended question. And the question is, what language Eden is thinking now? And I can write the answer. Okay, and submit. Now I, Shlomi, as the owner of this ED puzzle, of this video, just on ED puzzle, I will also be able to receive the, the answers and see who wrote what. Now, after answering the question, I can continue. The video will continue. And I defined that after 17 seconds, the second question will, uh, will appear. And the question is, for example, what plays you think Eden will get on the Eurovision? Now, how, how do I do it? I'm going first to YouTube. Okay, this is why it can also work in any kind of language, Russian, whatever you want, because it's based on YouTube. And let's say, just for the sake of the example, that I want to teach about, um, let's say, racism. Okay, so I'm writing now and doing it in Hebrew, but you could do it also in Russian. I wrote racism. And let's see, okay. I chose this video, just for the example. I don't know if it's a good video or not. And I'm copying the link of the video. And then I'm going back to ED Puzzle. And on the search content square, I'm just pasting the link. And then when pressing search, you will be able to see that ED Puzzle found the specific video that I chose. Now, when going on questions, I can decide what kind of question will appear and when. So I'm doing play. As advantage of okay, let's say that after uh, seven seconds, I want a open-ended question. And I can ask, what do you think about this? Say, now, after seven seconds, students who will watch this video will get a question after a few seconds. And this is a great example of how I can create an interactive YouTube video that will make my learner much more interactive in the learning process. It doesn't matter if it's in classroom or if it's a, an informal education activity, this is how at least I am using it. We already spoke about Word Wall, but I, I do want to show you another great app called Our Book. Our Book is an app to create a joint virtual book. So let's say that with your groups, with your classrooms, you want to create any type of book. Our Book can be the app that you're using. And I will put the link here on the chat for everyone who wants to use it. The idea is you're creating your own account and then you can put it, you can put in uh, pictures or drawings or text. And here is how I am starting um, to read the book and we can create our own class or group book um, by using this app. So again, it's a great app to make things a bit more interactive when using online. Now I'll stop my sharing for a second. I would say two very important things from my end. A, I know that many times after sharing those kind of presentations, people are telling me, wow, there are so many apps. I don't know even where to start with. And I'm saying, I, we, I know, it is totally making sense. I know there are many apps. And my answer to that would be, I don't think that there, there is any expectation that you will be familiar with all apps and the different uh, uh, websites that there are out there. 
There are tons of websites and I am sure that you are familiar with some apps and websites that I'm not familiar with. My suggestion to you is, after watching all of these uh, apps and different ideas, I would say focus on three apps that already in your mind and in your way of thinking, you're saying to yourself, okay, I can use this specific app and create activity with it, create a session, create a lesson with it and focus on it. And the second tip that I want to share is, it's always hard to start and I am sharing even from my perspective. When I am starting to work with a new app, it is hard for me. Um, and I, and I, I am saying to myself, it, 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 it takes time to me to start working with a specific app or a specific tool when it's the beginning. But after using the specific, this specific tool, time after time after time, at the fourth or the fifth time, usually it's much easier. So if now it seems, uh, for example, the ED Puzzle app, it seems, and you're saying to yourself, wow, how to copy the link from the YouTube and to paste it on ED Puzzle and then to insert the, it's, it's really complicated. I know that it looks complicated. Try, play with it. And after the second, the third, the fourth time, it will be much, much easier. I want to ask if there are any questions, if someone wants to add something. We do have more, uh, about eight minutes. If we do have more time, I will share more options and tools, unless someone wants to ask something about anything that I showed. And then it's important for me that you will leave this conversation without question about what I already showed. Can you insert apps into a website? What kind of apps that you are speaking, Katerina? I can, meanwhile, I don't know if you're typing, but um, so for example, the learning apps, uh, um, I'll show you the learning apps that I, showed learning apps. The learning apps is a, a, an app, or oh, and I do see that they have languages here, so it's good. Um, it is an app that is a very good to insert to a website. And just for the example, I went into a random uh, task. If you will see at the bottom of the page, you have use app, you can take the web link, specifically to this game. You can take a web link to a full screen or you can embed this game in a different website. So to your question, there are a few apps that you can embed in your website. In our third meeting, I will show you how I create, for example, virtual escape rooms and how I take, how I'm combining few apps in a website and then you can definitely use it. But for example, Padlet, you cannot take only the Padlet itself and to embed, embed the Padlet in your website. You can definitely put a link in your website to the Padlet board that you created. And then you can create, you can send your students the website. And in the website, there is a link, for example, after reading this text, please go to the Padlet and post a picture that reflects what you feel about this topic, for example. Does that make sense? Okay, I see that we have another question, but it's in Russian, so I do need someone please to translate it for me. Uh, 
don't know if we have someone from the staff that can translate the question. No, I don't know if someone is here. So I do apologize if you can write it in a way uh, in English, I would be happy to answer. Shlomi, תדליק את המתורגמנית, כי אתה לא שומע מה שהיא אומרת לך. תדליק את המתורגמנית. אוקיי, I'll switch to Russian. עכשיו אני שומע, כן, סליחה. Okay, תודה, יוליה, thank you. Um, so, definitely you need to practice. And this is your homework for our next meeting. I would like you to practice and we would like you, we, we would start, we will start the next conversation by asking a few of you, please share with us what you have practiced after we spoke here. The app that I'm using the most, I would say there are two. The first one is Padlet, and I will show you again what Padlet is. Padlet is the app that can offer me this um, joint um, uh, uh, board. The reason is, as I said before, there are many options how I can use Padlet. So I showed you one option with the, the wall. I showed you the option with the canvas. I can even show you an activity that we did with the option of math. So here is the option. And we asked our students, where is the place that they want to visit around the world? And here is how Padlet looks like when the background is a map itself. And it, it's really interesting because then I can go into each one and see what they wrote about the place that they have visited or they want to visit. And Padlet just give me a lot, a lot of options how, I, how Padlet can support my educational process. And you can see here, I have more Padlets. I can do different, here is, for example, a Kabbalah Shabbat that we did with, uh, with, my, uh, um, uh, with the Shlichim. I ask them to post on the wall um, the song that for them, this is the song that is the weekend, that is Shabbat for them. And there are many, many different options how I can use Padlet. So this is my first choice. Always, I have, for example, I have to, tonight, I have a seminar with uh, people from the United States. I am going to use Padlet. Second uh, app that I'm using a lot is the Word Wall, the one that we started with. It, just because the, the different games that I can create with it are really unlimited. They have few options that are really, really great and fun. And I can show you in different examples that, that we can use um, uh, that, or, or you can use. It's just fun way to learn. Uh, Balloon Pop, it's a great template to play with. Uh, here is, for example, idea of, I don't know, have, has. Um, so here is the game. And I'm assuming that we need to choose uh, to pop the balloon um, where it has or has and just one of the templates that we have um, so here is the word it comes so it's uh, uh, two girls and I need to uh, to select if it has or have and then by the end of the minute it will tell me if I was correct or not and it's a really, really, really fun uh, game to play. So my two favorites are Padlet and uh, Word Wall. Any other questions, something that you want to ask about anything? That's great. So I would say just for conclusion, to say that I know it's a lot. And as you already understand, you do need to practice and we do ask to practice at least one option from what we have learned today. And in our next meeting, we will ask a few of you to share with us what you have practiced. So I hope it was meaningful. Thank you very much, Todaraba, on your time. 
and we will meet uh, next week.